Jacksonville is hopeful that their investment in Lawrence will pay off quickly. And Lawrence said he's confident the team's best football is ahead of them. When you talk about the team and where we're heading, I feel like the best days are definitely ahead of us. And I know speaking individually as well, um, in my game, I feel like I'm far from playing my best football, and I know that's ahead of me. So I'm really excited about that. This team that we have this year is really good. I think it's the best team we've had since I've been there, and I'm really excited to see see it all come together throughout training camp and as we get ready for the season. I'm picking them to win their division. I'm picking Dallas not to make the playoffs. So when people say, well, he got paid, he's a better quarterback. Dallas has not necessarily been dysfunctional, but a bit delusional. Jacksonville's been dysfunctional most of the last 20 years, and he got him a playoff win. So I think they're going to be the best. I think Houston and Jacksonville are going to carry the division this year, and and people will see it. Because right now, there's a lot of like, well, what's Justin Herbert? Justin finally has a legitimate coach. Trevor's finally got a big-time roster. Both are going to flourish this year. If they're healthy, they'll both flourish. I totally agree with Herbert. Lawrence, I really like his talent. I think everyone really likes his talent. He was kind of this Elway-Marino hybrid. You mentioned number one quarterback comes out of Clemson. Yeah. He's been good. He hasn't been great. That's right. He had a great stretch the last nine games of 2022. Mm -hmm. Last year, he was banged up a lot. All year. They give him $200 million guaranteed. Yeah. I'll tell you why I really love him, though. Because his talent is to throw the ball down the field. And what did Jacksonville just draft? Yeah. Ryan Thomas Jr., yeah. who was a monstrous vertical threat, overshadowed by Malik Neighbors at LSU. 17 touchdowns, 6'4", 210. He can yeah. flat out run. Well, Ran a 4 three forty. Colin, I'm telling you, he is a superstar in the making. Lawrence, they're going to miss Ridley. But between him, Kirk, Ingram, Etienne, and, and Gabe Davis, Lawrence is going to eat this year. Well, the other thing is Trevor Lawrence's contract is a bit like Ken Griffey in Seattle. He saved baseball. Lawrence saved the Jacks. Yeah, the Jags were considering moving. Yeah. You can't. I mean, Dallas is never moving. Trevor Lawrence is the most important player in the history of Jacksonville Jaguars football. There is no second place. He saved the franchise. I mean, a couple years ago, we were talking as we, they were they were putting that team in the international games. Yeah. There was a lot of discussion. Thing. Move them to London. So his contract, a lot of it is, it's Ken Griffey to the Mariners, the Kingdom. They were trying to get a new stadium built. Like they beat it. the Yankees. Yeah. You and I grew up in that area. Yeah. Griffey like save baseball. Seattle had it and then lost it in '69. They almost lost it again. Griffey, Griffey was worth whatever you paid him. Yeah. Part of Griffey's contract was he is saving baseball in our city. Dak's not saving I, that's Dallas fair. with okay. That's football. fair. That's fair. So, t -Law. okay, we're in. Uh, let's go to the Commanders, because I want to go to another rookie quarterback we've been talking about a lot. Jaden Daniels, second overall Heisman winner, LSU, is gearing up for his first NFL training camp and discussing what he's looking to accomplish as a rookie. He said, Colin, he's hoping to shift the culture in Washington and that winning, div winning the division, the NFC East, is the main goal. Now, I really like Jaden Daniels. I know you do as well. Yeah. I think Dan Quinn has shown whether it's in Atlanta or now in Washington, and in Dallas, actually, with the defense, that he can invigorate, reinvigorate a franchise with his culture. Jaden Daniels is extremely talented. He's young, he's slight, but he has Cliff Kingsbury there, who's worked with quarterbacks before, has told me, yeah. and know he's talked to you about this, the guy's incredibly gifted. Yeah. But can Washington actually accelerate up the top of the division? You already said Dallas not making the playoffs. No, I think Washington's going to be my surprise team in the league. I've said I think Minnesota and Denver are better than people think. I think Washington will surprise the league. They'll be a wild card team. I think he's going to be a little bit of a Lamar Jackson, uh, who I think will be better than Lamar in the pocket out of college. I think he's much more gifted throwing the football. Yeah, I, th Lamar. I think Jaden's really good. I don't think he's as physically gifted as, say, a Caleb Williams, but I think there's, there's a reason he went second in the draft. All the people I talk to, Every single scout I talked to thought he was clearly the second best quarterback in this draft. And in most drafts, would have been the number one. Better than Bryce Young, moves better than Bryce, equally good thrower. So I, I think Washington's going to be really good. Yeah, I and think, I think their roster is better than people think. So I was going to say, get the ball to Terry McLaurin, get Jahan Dawson. They got Austin Eckler. And let's let's move the pocket and get, get, no. get Danny Daniels in space. Yeah. There's a team every year that shocks us. It was Houston last year. I think it's Washington this year. Uh, Jordan with the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Lie News. Sam Smith, long time. It is a Friday. It is great to be here live in Los Angeles. It's The Herd. Wherever you may be and 
However you may be listening, thanks for making us part of your day. Jordan Schultz in tow today as usual. Blake Corum, the Michigan Wolverine rookie, stops by today. Danny Parkins, who filled in for me, great Chicago radio voice, stopping by. Sam Smith, longtime NBA writer. We got the Summer League. We got the Olympic team. And... Um, and tomorrow, the Baltimore Ravens open their camp for the rookies. So this is sort of the last day for sports talk radio in America without heavy NFL. And from this point forward, that's the thing that moves the needle. It's a lot of NFL talk. But I thought, Jordan, I'm going to start today with an NFL topic. Okay, we're going to start with an NFL topic today. So Aaron, I saw him in a golf tournament. Aaron Rodgers yesterday at a golf tournament. And Aaron was always a very, very polarizing player because he was good looking and kind of cocky and he replaced Favre and he's always been polarizing. Then he comes in with strong political opinions and vaccine opinions. Now he's like wildly crazy uh, polarizing. I got no problem with that. I don't care. I, I can disagree with him on his politics and his vaccine. I don't care. He's a real talented guy. But Mark Schlereth was, um, you know, on his personal podcast talking about, like, at Thanksgiving, there's a grown-up table and a kid's table. And if you're talking all-time great quarterbacks, Aaron would be at the kid's table. And that'll be viewed as anti-Aaron. But one of the reasons I didn't buy into Aaron going to the Jets and changing the world is I view Aaron as almost, and I felt like this with Odell Beckham Jr., he's almost an NBA brand. That he wins awards, he's aesthetically pleasing, he got very rich, but I don't consider him an all-time great team guy, and football's our team sport. And here's a great example. So Aaron's early career, um, he sits on the bench for three years behind a legend, and his rookie year, he's 6-10. and 10. So if you take his prime years from year five in Green Bay, got a slower start, and, and to year 17, where he won MVP, um, cause people tend to Michael Jordan. Nobody remembers the wizard years. We don't talk about the years he got beat by Boston and Detroit. We, we go to your prime years. So let's go to Aaron's 13 years of prime football. He had 21 playoff games, 11 and 10 lost several times at home as a favorite. He lost at home to old Tom Brady, Jimmy Garoppolo, Colin Kaepernick in 21 playoff starts. He had one come from behind win. Brady had nine times that. Mahomes is just going into his prime. He's got five times that. Aaron was always, as a quarterback, a front runner. When the weather was good, when things were good, when he had a lead, these aren't opinions, these are facts. In 13 years, he had one playoff run. He's very much an NBA star where he's aesthetically pleasing. He's pretty to watch. He got rich. He's got a big brand. But if you look at the all-time great quarterbacks, you got to do better than one trip to a Super Bowl in 13 years. Marino and Aaron are, are kind of those guys we look at and go, you had good coaches. You had stability. You had good offensive lines. What the hell happened? I was looking this morning at Super Bowl appearances for many of the great quarterbacks. Brady had 10, Elway 5, Montana 4, Bradshaw 4, Peyton Manning 4, Staubach 4, Jim Kelly, Aikman, Big Ben, Kurt Warner, Tarkenton 3, 4. Aaron had one. And remember, he played in the mostly weak division where the Bears and the Lions were always a mess, and Minnesota was never great, so he got home field a lot. Green Bay also has a decided home field advantage because it's the coldest place in the league outside of Buffalo. He had two offensive coaches, three if you count his first coach as a rookie. He always had good offensive lines, and the Packers are always stable. They're never a tire fire. Maybe some years the defense isn't as good as we think. So in 13 years of prime, he was a 500 playoff quarterback, 21 games, one come from behind playoff win. That's what he is. So why don't you buy into the Jets? I don't like their offensive line, and I always thought Aaron was kind of a was kind of an Aaron guy and not necessarily a foxhole guy. He's not Mahomes, who plays from behind as well as he plays with a lead. He's not Brady, who's better in his biggest games. He doesn't have the intellect of Manning or the size and the mobility of Big Ben. He's not Aikman, the leader, 
or as tough as Bradshaw. It's not a criticism. It's just my eyes. So, you know, 